Right, answers, maths answers to the um, 2018 design engineering question paper. Um, 1C part 2 is the gimbal one. You're asked to work out uh, the angle at which it's tilted when the input goes up to 2.7 volts. So basically you've got a potentiometer, 10K1. Think of it like a potential di uh, divider. It's saying when it's horizontal, it's pretty much at 50% of its uh, dial, its wiper. So you've got 5K either side of this. Uh, this resistor, if you imagine it like a potential divider, it's dividing it equally, you're getting half the voltage. Um, I find in questions like this, it's often best just to sketch out what they're talking about. Uh, so it just helps you understand it a bit. You can visualise what kind of order you're looking at. Um, so I'm using a graphics tablet and paint in this case, and I can't do it very well, so excuse the poor drawings. But it's saying um, when it's horizontal, like this, uh, the input voltage is half, so it's 50% there. Um, you can imagine it says the range is... Where is it? 300 degrees. So if you're imagining halfway is there, it's kind of going to have 60 degrees of no action there and the 300 degrees of action there, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, it's asking what angle it is when the input voltage is 2.7 volts. So it doesn't matter if you have 5 volts down here and 0 volts here, but you're just trying to work out what kind of angle off horizontal that is, whether it's there or there. Um, so visualising it, it just makes it a bit easier for you to be able to kind of work out how to get to that end result. You haven't necessarily learned a specific formula about how to find the angle on a gimbal. You've got to work it out there and then. So for me anyway, I mean, you've all got different ways of kind of figuring stuff out, but a little sketch like that can help understand it. So I can see from there, um, what am I looking for? Well, this is 50%. If I got a percentage of this whole range, um, I can work out basically how many degrees from here it is. So if I do uh, basically 2.7 volts, 2.7 volts over 5 volts equals 0.54 equals 54%. Now, when you're writing out workings out in an exam, it's always good just to kind of like break it all down into your thinking stages, but also be accurate about what you're saying. So when you're saying equals, it is still equaling uh, the same kind of thing. I wouldn't want to then go and put equals five volts because it doesn't equal five volts. It's, it's, it's a different thing. So um, anyway, 54% uh, of 300 degrees, the full range, Oops, like this graphics tablet. Hopefully your uh, writing will be neat in this. Equals 162 degrees. Okay, so you can then say, therefore, movement is basically, <clears throat> if that's 150 degree, uh, 150 degrees there, halfway, therefore, uh, 162 degrees minus 150 degrees equals 12 degrees from horizontal. Okay, so yeah, simple like that. Just sketch it out like that, show some working, and then at least if you kind of make a uh, an error at some point, if you've shown a kind of understanding of what you're doing, you should be able to get a few marks for it. Okay, um, no more maths on that question, so then we go on to 2B, which is a bit of good old-fashioned Pythagoras theorem. Um, hopefully you'll find this quite easy, you've got basically the monomic so katoa, sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine 
adjacent hypotenuse, tan opposite adjacent. So here we've got an opposite and a hypotenuse. So that is sine SOH. And if you write um, so yeah, if you just do a little sketch like that on your exam paper, so you've got 27, 385, and S. Um, SOH, sine 27 equals S, opposite over 385 brackets h. Um, rearrange that s equals sine 27 times 385 174.79. 174 now it asks you to do it to the nearest millimeter so that's going to round up to 175. Should be nice and easy, that one. Um, on to the next part with the brake lever. Okay. Um, it might look a bit more complicated than it actually is. You might start thinking you need to calculate forces at angle, you know, vectors and angles and stuff like that. Um, you've basically got what's effectively a bell crank so um, you can rearrange that as a simpler lever if you want or you can just draw it as is um, but it's it's an amplifying lever so you're going to create a larger force with a smaller travel on this cable um, and the lever uh, the leverage factor is basically the ratio of these two amounts here so it didn't matter if you had the fulcrum here um, the load here and the effort here uh, but it's just rotated around this way. So again, if you just draw a nice little diagram what you're doing, so this would be uh, 25 newtons, this 85 millimetres, uh, 40 millimetres here, and then you're looking for the force here. So... Um, Leverage factor, write it out, 85 over 40 equals 2.125. And I'd write leverage factor here, just, um, just saying what you're doing. And okay, so um, it's going to be 2.125 times as much of a force, so 25 newtons times 2.125 equals 53.125 newtons. Now just check on the exam paper if they ask for decimal places, in this case they don't, so it's not a stupidly long number, just leave it like that. Um, on to the next one which is C part two, uh, the cable one. Okay, so you're looking at a bike brake cable. It's always a good idea to kind of look at the magnitude of what you're um, calculating. So when you get an answer, for example, um, the area of a circle. Obviously in meters squared, it's going to be a pretty tiny area. Uh, that's something really important and it kind of makes uh, if you're looking at the amount of marks you're getting here you know that you're given a very simple formula here uh, so obviously there's something else that you need to consider and that is converting millimeters squared to meters squared so obviously as mentioned in the intro um, a thousand millimeters in a meter but a thousand times a thousand millimetres squared in a metre squared. So you're, you're having to scale it down by a million, 10 to the 6, or 10 to the minus 6 in this case. Um, now, you're going to use that number here further along. So you notice here we've already got it in metres squared. Um, it makes this a little bit more tricky, just making sure you've got a uh, 
you know, the, the digits in the right form or if you're using standard form, making the powers correct or whatever. Um, anyway, going on to this, so it's a simple thing. Um, radius is 0 0.8. Don't forget to turn diameter into radius. Uh, pi r squared, 3.142 times 0 0.8 squared is 2.01 millimeter squared. Now remember, you've got to turn that into meters squared. So uh, divide it by a million. So you can write 2.01 times 10 to the minus six meters squared at that point. Uh, and that will give you three marks. Okay, stress. Uh, again, in the intro vi video, you might have noticed uh, I was mentioning stress. If you can't remember what stress, uh, how to work out stress with force and area, then just look at the what they're asking for on the units. Newtons per millimeter squared. So that's force divided by area. Stress equals force divided by area. Stress is effectively almost like a pressure. It's it's how much force is exerted on that particular area. So a little tiny brake cable is going to be under a high stress because it's a very small surface area. Um, <clears throat> okay, you should get 180, uh, sorry, look at the wrong one, um, 300 newtons divided by uh, 2.01 times 10 to the minus 6, um, and that comes out at 149, 149253.7.31. Uh, um, make sure you turn that into uh a nice easy to well you can leave it like that you'll get full marks or you can put mega pascals because it's uh it's uh 1.49 times 10 to the 8 pascals so you can say it's 149 mega pascals okay uh right young's modulus now um again this is one of the uh, things that you might need to memorize off by heart stress over strain you might be given it in this case we're not but um, you still need to remember what strain is and what stress is we've just worked out what the stress is the strain is the amount that the uh, the cable is stretched by in a given given um, uh, exertion stress basically so it's the extension of it. It's the percentage. Well, it's not a percentage, but it's a factor in which it increases by. So um, so just write it out again. Okay? Young's modulus. Equals stress over strain now we're wanting to find out the strain so therefore um, strain equals uh, stress over Young's modulus okay um, that's 149 times 10 to the 6 over 18 times 10 to the 9. Okay, so you've got um, 180 gigapascals. So giga is obviously a thousand mega. It's a thousand ten to the sixes. It's ten to the nine. Okay, neither of these are written in proper standard form. You can see they're big numbers here, but they will still. It's just it's a shorthand way of writing out lots of numbers. Now, when you divide that on the calculator, or if the smart ones can work out, you can just take off um, uh, factor here and just have a ten to the minus three, and then just divide that. But anyway, just if you're not sure about doing it that way, just do put it all into the calculator, uh, and you should come out with zero point zero 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 eight two eight strain. So 
amount via extends. Now, in our case, this particular brake cable is 1,000 millimeters, so 1,500 millimeters long. So that times 1,500 equals 1.24 millimeters extension. Oops. Anyway, um, so four E. Thank you, Pat. 